Today, I show you every step of making custom animated stream alerts. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today we're taking a look at stream alerts and more specifically, how to make custom animated stream alerts from start to finish. So we're starting in Photoshop, we're gonna design your alert, take it into After Effects and animate it, and then I'm gonna show you how to export it and encode it into a WebM format that's perfect for your alerts. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into the tutorial. But before I do, I just wanted to say, if you do not follow me already on Twitch, I try to stream every Sunday and Tuesday over at Twitch TV forward slash abravitym. We play a lot of games over there and sometimes we try to design stuff live on stream. But that aside, let's get into the tutorial. All right, guys, so here we are inside of Photoshop and I've just opened up a blank document. This is the normal size of a video, 1920 by 1080, but it really doesn't matter what size you open it as because I'll show you why in a little bit. But now it's time to begin designing your alert and what you should keep in mind when you're designing this is you are designing what the finished alert looks like. Once it's finished animating in and it's done and on your screen, this is what it's going to look like. And if you don't take a lot of time on designing it, you're gonna have a crappy alert. If you take a ton of time designing it, you're probably gonna have something that looks a lot better but we're going to design something really quick just so i can show you the process of kind of how you would do it so we're going to create just kind of a rectangle let's say an orange rectangle like this and this is going to be the main body of our alert where the uh the text is going to go that says new follower or whatever and actually yeah i think we're going to make a follower alert so there we go we've got the main body and then i just want to quickly add some details so we're going to duplicate that and on the bottom one here i'm going to change that to be maybe like a a darker gray solid just like that and then we can move it out of the way just like this to make it look like it's kind of like a shadow and actually that, I don't like that gray um, maybe make it like a, a light blue like that that looks pretty cool so an orange then you got like this light blue shadow thing and now I'm gonna add a little box over here for like a logo or something so let's go ahead and make a perfect square just like that and maybe make this the same color as that light blue we're gonna drop that just right in here just like that that looks pretty cool and you could put your logo in there if you wanted to but I think we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it pretty simple and just make it like a heart for followers so if we go over here to your shape tools and we go to like a custom shape we already got the heart set up here there's so many things that you could do inside of these custom shapes but we'll just select the heart and then we'll just make it like this nice pink color so let's go ahead and draw a heart here just like that there we go we'll go ahead and throw it over the top of our box here that hearts a little big so let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller, just like that. Make sure it's nice and centered. Perfect. And there we go. I say that is a pretty good alert. You could add a bunch more detail to this. As you can see, I designed that in literally like a minute or two, and it looks like I designed it in a minute or two, but it's just showing you guys quickly how you can design what a finished alert would look like inside of Photoshop. I could go in here and I could add so many like little details around the top, like little bands and whatnot that move around, and I could add drop shadows and layer styles and whatnot. There's so many things you can do, but this is not a Photoshop tutorial. This is just showing you quickly how you can design an alert to be whatever you want with any colors, with any designs you want inside of Photoshop and real quick before we export this we're just going to go over here to where it says background and it's locked and we're going to double click it and hit OK and that's going to unlock the layer and then we're just going to delete that white background so there we go we've now just got our layers that we use to create this on a transparent background and now it's time to quickly crop it so this is why the uh, size of your project or your document didn't really matter because we're going to crop it to be the size of our alert or just kind of close to it so we're just going to crop in like this, leave a nice little buffer on each side, just like that. And then we can just go ahead and grab all of our shapes here and just make sure they're all centered up, just like that. There we go. So now we've got a centered alert cropped in and it's time to save that. So you just wanna go up to file and then save as, and we're gonna save it as just a normal Photoshop document, a PSD, and we're gonna call it Bravity Alert Alerts Tutorial 2. There we go, save it, because this is the second time I've had to record this video. But we're gonna go ahead and hit okay, and there we go, we are done inside of Photoshop. And now we'll move into After Effects and take a look at how to animate your custom designed alert. All right guys, so here we are inside of After Effects and it's time to begin animating the alert. So right here, I've got a blank After Effects project. I've done nothing, I just opened it up and hit new project. And normally you'd hit new composition here, but for this, we don't need to create a new composition and I'll show you why. All we need to do is head over into where we saved our alert and we just need to drag it in 
in or import it into After Effects, and it's going to create the composition for us. So once everything loads up, just like that, you're gonna see where it says Import Kind. You just wanna make sure that this is set to Composition, Retain Layer Sizes. It might be set to Footage. Make sure you set it to Composition, Retain Layer Sizes, and then just hit OK, and you'll see that it creates a composition for us. So up here in our project window, we can just double click it, and there we go, we've got our alert, just like we designed it inside of Photoshop, and now it's time to begin animating it. So to animate it, we're gonna start with this box with the heart in it first, so we can just hide these two rectangles and not worry about them for now. So what I want the box to do is I want it to zoom in and then move over to the side, and I want it to end up right here. And since I want it to end up right there, I can go ahead and start my keyframes a little bit forward where I want the animation to end. So I want it to end right here, so I'll just move forward like 30 frames, and we'll go ahead and hit the drop down of the rectangle and we'll start our keyframes. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that our anchor point is in the correct spot. So you see our anchor points here. I don't like it being way over here. I want it to be inside of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my layer is selected, hit our anchor point tool and just move the anchor point right into the center of the box. And we're actually gonna do this with the heart layer as well. So select the heart layer and then move the anchor point into the center of the heart as well. And now I actually want this heart to move with the box. Anywhere I move this square, I want the heart to move as well. So what I can do is come up here and grab the heart layer and head on over to this little squiggly tool here here and just drag and drop it onto the rectangle and that'll parent them together so now if I move the rectangle anywhere you'll see the heart moves with it so now it's time to begin our keyframe so we're gonna set a keyframe for position scale and rotation just like that and we're gonna move back maybe like uh, I don't know right here at the like 15 frame mark and then we're gonna go ahead and add some more keyframes just like that and we want to move these keyframes to where the box is in the center of the composition. So we're gonna go up here to our align tool and we're just gonna hit the center align and you'll see it brings our box into the center of the composition. So now we've got it animating over to the side just like that, nice and quickly. And now we want it to scale down because remember we're animating this box backwards. So we're gonna go to the beginning of our composition and we wanna set the scale to zero. So just like that, we set the scale to zero. So now we've got it scaling in and then it moves over to the side, just like that. Now, I don't like how it just immediately, once it finishes scaling, it moves over to the side. I wanna add a little bit of a buffer. So we're gonna move these keyframes over and we're actually gonna duplicate them or just hit Command C to copy them and then we're gonna paste them here. So now there's just kind of this buffer area where there's no animation happening because these keyframes are the same. So we're gonna have it, we're gonna have it zoom in, hold for a minute, then move over to the side. So there we go, zoom in, move zoom in, move. I think that looks pretty good, and that is enough for an alert animation just like that. So, next up, we're gonna animate our boxes where the text is gonna go. So I want these boxes to come out from behind the heart square whenever it moves over like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna once again parent these together. So I want the, this orange one to be attached to the blue one or vice versa, the blue one attached to the orange one. So once again, we're gonna add, grab this little pick whip tool, click it, and we're gonna drag it onto the other rectangle. So now when we move this orange rectangle anywhere, the blue one is going to move with it just like that. So now it's time to begin our animation. So let's go ahead and hit our drop down of the animation we just created and make sure we match it up perfectly. So right at this keyframe when it's gonna start moving to the side, we're gonna go ahead and set a keyframe for the position and the scale of our box. Now we need to move the uh, anchor point for our boxes as well just like we did for our square. So let's go ahead and grab our anchor point tool. And instead of moving our anchor point into the center of the rectangle, we're gonna move it all the way over here to the side. And I'll show you why we do that in a second. So let's do that with this one as well. Move the anchor point all the way over to this side. So now it's time to begin our animation. We're gonna to move to the end. And at the end, this is where we want it to end up. We want it to end up looking like this. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our keyframes and we're gonna leave them just like that. And now we need to change these ones at the beginning so that it ends up here. So let's go to our beginning ones. And what we wanna do is we want to unlink our scale. So you'll see right here at scale, you can hit these links and it's gonna unlink it. So now we can move the scale this way or this way and they are not connected to each other. When you move one scale, um, one scale number, it doesn't move them both. So now what we can do is we can actually scale this all the way down and you'll see it shrinks this way. That's because we put the anchor, anchor point over here on the left side. I know this is getting a little complex, but I hope you guys are understanding what I mean. Um, but since we put the anchor point over on that left side, you'll see it scales over to the left side. So we're gonna set this to zero. 
on the scale, so it's completely gone. But now we just need to move our position so that it is hiding behind the heart box. So you'll see if we started to play it right now, the scale is starting out over here, but we want the position to be hidden behind our heart box, just like that. So now when we play it, you'll see that the scale comes out from behind the heart instead of over here to the left. So there we go. We've now got our animation where the heart comes in and then the boxes come out from behind it. So let's go ahead and fit this to screen. Go ahead and collapse everything down because I think we are done with our animations and play it. And as you can see, that's a pretty good looking animated alert that pops in when somebody were to follow. So now it is time to make it animate out and you don't have to just reanimate it all again. I'm gonna show you a quick way to where you can animate it backwards. So what you wanna do is you just wanna select everything here and you just wanna hit pre-compose and you can call it like alert or whatever you want. You don't need to rename it if you don't want to. And now as you'll see, it just turned our entire animation into just this one layer. So if we move forward, you'll see we've got our animation here, just like that, all inside of one layer. So what we wanna do is we wanna maybe go to like the two second mark, just like that. And we wanna hit Control Shift D on our keyboard, just like that. And we wanna delete that. And then we're gonna hit Control D on our keyboard and it'll duplicate it. So we split it and deleted the back half and then duplicated our two second clip here. And on the top one, you just wanna right click, go to time and you wanna to go to time reverse layer. And that's just gonna reverse your footage so that now if you drag this one to the end, you'll see that it animates in and then cuts to the reverse one and then animates back out. It just plays your exact animation in reverse. And now we got an awesome four second alert that just plays in and then plays out. And now it is time to export. So to export, you need to add your in and out points. So we're gonna go to right when the alert ends and hit in on the keyboard. And when you hit in on the keyboard, that's gonna create an out point for you, just like that. So now we've got a looping if we play it, when it gets to the out point, It'll then just loop just like that. So what you want to do now is make sure your composition is selected and go to composition and add to render queue. And in order to render it properly with an alpha background, you want to go to where it says output module and click on where it says lossless in blue and change this format to QuickTime. Whoops, change it to QuickTime. And then here in the channels, you want to make sure this is RGB plus alpha. It's going to default to RGB. You wanna make sure it's RGB plus alpha. That'll create the transparent background that you need to put it over your stream. And then you just wanna hit okay. And then right here where it says output two and you got the name of whatever you called your Photoshop file, you wanna click that blue part and you wanna name it wherever you want and save it wherever you want. We're just gonna call it Bravity Alerts Tutorial 2, just like that. Hit save and then we're just going to render it. And now that you've got that rendered out of After Effects, you're not quite done yet. Right now you've just got a normal QuickTime MOV video file of your alert and you can't do anything with that. You need it in some sort of web format. And to do that, we're gonna convert using a website called A Convert. Now there's a ton of WebM converters out there. You can use whatever one you're comfortable with, but just keep in mind that not all WebM converters are gonna leave that alpha background that we talked about to have a transparent background. Some are gonna add a black background. So just make sure you're experimenting. I like to use A Convert. It's completely free. You just search a convert and just come here, click video. You just wanna hit choose file and you just wanna find where you saved your exported QuickTime out of After Effects and then bring it into here. So there we go, I've brought in my Bravity Alerts tutorial too, just like that. And now in the target format, you just wanna make sure you select WebM here. And then for the options, you just wanna leave it at do not change anything else. And then just go ahead and hit convert and it's going to uh, convert it for you. And there we go, our file has just finished converting, so all you gotta do is scroll down here to where it says output file, and over here this arrow pointing at the bar where it says save, you just wanna click that. Then it's gonna give you a link right here, right click, open the link in the new tab, and if you click on here, you'll see you've got your animated alert here, and if you hit these three dots, you can hit download your your uh, WebM just right there, and there it is. You've got a WebM downloaded that's gonna go straight to your downloads folder, and now it's time to add it into Streamlabs. So I say time to add it into Streamlabs, but this works for any of the alert programs or alert websites that you wanna use it for. WebM is just an all around web video file so that you can add it anywhere. But here inside of our alerts, we're in the follow part. And when you go to image, we just wanna change our media and we wanna drag in our new WebM file here. Make sure it's selected and hit select. And there it is just inside of there. And if we go ahead and hit save on those changes, and then we turn on our alert box over here in OBS, hit test follows. Wow. 
and boom, there it is, our brand new alert that we just created inside of After Effects. As you can see, the timings are a little bit messed up and the text doesn't fit right because I've got it for my alerts, but you can just add the text being a little bit bigger, move it over, do whatever you want. But as you can see, we've got our own custom animated alert inside of Streamlabs and it looks really good. All right, guys, and that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you jump into Photoshop and After Effects and into the A Convert website and create your own animated alerts. You can spend tons of time doing whatever you want inside of Photoshop. Take what you learned from me quickly animating inside of After Effects and add a couple little animations. You can even add some light sweeps and some pulsing colors and maybe change the colors around. Do whatever you want inside of After Effects. All that you need to know is that once you export it, you change it to WebM, and you can import that directly into Streamlabs for your own custom animated alerts but once again i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to jump on over to twitch and follow me because i try to stream every tuesday and sunday but i'll see you guys in the next video peace out